Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Billy went inside Chancellor Winters, Lily's office. Billy left Lily a message while she was gone, asking that they get together right away to talk about a pressing issue. When Chelsea arrived, she was distraught and told Billy she needed to talk. Billy inquired about Connor. Chelsea sobbed, saying, Things are so much worse for Connor than we thought. Chelsea clarified that Connor's OCD was out of control because his medicine made him drowsy and interfered with his therapy sessions. Chelsea sobbed, saying, He's not improving. He's becoming worse. He is not even allowed to be in the same room as us. We're unable to give him a hug and express our love for him. Billy reassured Chelsea that resolving the issue would require time. Chelsea sobbed as she admitted that she and Adam shared some of the blame for Connor's sickness. Chelsea sobbed as she revealed that Connor had bruised his thighs all over by himself. Chelsea broke the news to Billy in a sorrowful voice that Connor would require inpatient therapy, which would mean a protracted time of isolation and careful monitoring. Chelsea sobbed, saying that Connor felt like a burden and lacked any sense of worth. Billy shot back, that's the OCD speaking. That's not Connor at all. Chelsea clarified that Connor's worries were ingrained convictions. Duffin, Lily, and Nate got together for morning coffee at Society. It was the first time Nate remembered seeing Aunt Mamie so distraught. Devon questioned whether Lily and Nate should put up with Aunt Mamie's constant interruptions. Lily recollected that Mamie had expressed surprise at their reluctance to exclude Jill and Billy, speculating that Mamie might then get into even more difficulties. Mamie felt deceived. Nate retorted, even though she had no plans to forfeit her investment. Devon responded, well, I thought we had to fend off Tucker, but it's the internal threats within Chancellor Winters that we have to worry about. Lily was momentarily sidetracked when she saw Billy's urgent message asking to meet. Nate stated that Mamie was emotionally and monetarily committed, and that she lacked the ability to bring her family together, which would have caused business instability. Lily maintained their position that Mamie had overreached and they should back off. Devon added that he supported Mamie's decision to remove Billy. After giving Devon's remark some thought, Lily fell silent again and insisted that it was not the proper decision to remove Billy since Jill would take offense and declare war. Devon questioned Lily about whether she believed Billy posed a greater risk outside the organization than inside. Lily spoke up for Billy, saying he had some solid ideas. Devon maintained that Billy was a demand about gaining more authority. Billy requested a private meeting, Lily informed Nate and Devon. Devon mockingly said, Well, that sounds like divide and conquer to me. Devon questioned Nate about Billy's potential to take advantage of Mamie's disputes after Lily departed. Nate remembered that Billy had never sided with Mamie, even though he had acknowledged alongside Jill, that Mamie was a problem. Mamie had been right, Nate added, to suspect that a level of paranoia was beginning to seep into their thinking and that it might be more harmful than anything Billy could try. Nathan recalled Devon's beliefs that he frequently concocted conspiracy theories about internal threats, including Lily and Billy sharing glances and agreeing to vote. Instead, Nate proposed they concentrate on building bridges. Devon retorted that they wouldn't probably be able to build bridges with the bomb Billy was about to drop. When Lily got to her office, she saw Chelsea talking to Billy with tears in her eyes. Lily mentioned that Connor had been on her mind. Before leaving the room, Chelsea said thank you to Lily. Billy was asked by Lily whether he would like to go with Chelsea. Billy retorted that he could not wait to tell Lily what he was about to. Billy remarked, Jill took a very important choice. She has made the decision to stand back and has given me complete decision-making authority. Billy was asked by Lily if he had attempted to persuade Jill to support his attempts to seize power because of her decision. Billy maintained that Jill had chosen to keep her board seat, but that her decision had come as a shock. Billy clarified that Jill wanted him to be the star. Laughing, 
Lily questioned Billy about why Jill had not told Lily and Devon about the decision directly. Lily likened Jill's choice to Mamie's manipulative tactics. Lily was certain that she didn't like Jill's or Mamie's strategies, and she was surprised that Jill hadn't told her about taking a back seat and giving Billy more authority. Billy stated that he had no hesitations about taking on his mother's responsibilities, and that the company suffered from Devon and Mamie's antagonism. Upon their arrival, Devon and Nate discovered that Jill had resigned and designated Billy as her replacement. Lily asked Devon to wait and speak with Jill in an effort to defuse the situation. While touring the world, Devon grumbled that Jill was inaccessible. Devon forewarned Billy that they would not allow him to escape consequences. Although she knew Adam would be tired from his journey, Sally offered comfort and brought coffee and muffins to his flat. Adam stated that Connor was having difficulties as his physicians worked to identify the appropriate drugs. He clarified that this process required trial and error in order to monitor both the side effects and the desired outcomes. Adam mentioned that Connor's treatment plan also took into account Connor's family history of mental illness. Sally admitted that the family was going through a scary moment. Adam informed Sally that Connor's sleep had been disrupted by his medication schedule. Adam sobbed because he and Chelsea had been denied access to see Connor because of the issues. Adam clarified that Connor had started pounding his legs with his fists as a kind of self-punishment. Sally comforted Adam, telling him that Connor would gain from being treated by top specialists in the area. Adam was advised by Sally not to worry about the worst-case situation. Adam pointed out that Connor felt bad because he thought he was broken and his parents had to pay to fix him. Chelsea informed Adam she could not stomach returning to work when she dropped by his apartment. Sally apologized to Chelsea regarding Connor and complimented Adam and Chelsea on their bravery in handling Connor's difficult circumstances. Chelsea sobbed as she told Adam she was a mess and didn't feel brave at all after Sally departed. Chelsea confided in Adam that she wanted to scream and crawl into bed. Adam said that he felt bad about frequently confiding in Sally about his problems and that she was unable to assist him. Chelsea admitted that her only activity on Billy's shoulder was sobbing. Adam said to Chelsea that they should talk to one other because only they knew what they were going through. In response, Chelsea said, We didn't communicate at all on the drive back from Maryland. I'm here to make a request. Are you blaming me for everything? Since their son was practically hitting himself, Adam insisted that they should not waste time blaming each other. His little hands, they used to wrap around my fingers when he was a baby. Chelsea sobbed. The hands we would hold as we assisted him in crossing the road. How could he be injuring himself with those hands? In what way is this not our fault? Adam warned Chelsea that blaming others would not solve their son's healing problem. Adam explained to Chelsea that their parental instincts had failed them and that they would now need to put their trust in the experts and the system. Chelsea concurred, stating that she had experienced mental illness herself and could not bear to think that their son was going through what she had. Adam's cool-headed handling of the situation was commended by Chelsea. Adam insisted that it would not be just to interfere with Connor's care. Going forward is the only viable option, asserted Adam. Sally went to Crimson Lights with Chlo. Chlo claimed to be aware that Sally had been using her personal account to cover their business costs. Sally spoke back, I had to. Would you prefer that our business fail? Sally expressed to Chlo her hope of buying them some time while they worked on a solution. Sally's personal contribution, Chlo argued, would be a debt they would eventually pay back. Sally questioned Chlo about where to look for funding to keep their business afloat. Chlo hesitated before accepting Adam's proposal to work for Newman Enterprises. Victor had shot down the plan, Sally reflected, and he was unlikely to change his mind. Chlo was unfazed, sure that she and Sally could convince Adam to change Victor's mind. Sally insisted that she would not add to Adam's problems. Cho recommended talking to Nick. Sally said no. Cho inquired of Sally whether their collaboration had been a mistake. Sally clarified that since fashion was their vocation, they had erred by venturing outside of their comfort zone. Cho inquired about Nick's stake in their company, 
which does interior design. Sally advised them to move fast into the fashion industry and take independent action in order to protect Nick's investment. Sho concurred. Dressed in a body-skimming gown, Phyllis sauntered into the athletic club and headed straight for a seat where Christine was calmly enjoying her coffee. Well, looky here, Phyllis remarked, giving Christine a fierce look. Isn't it time for you to focus on your very important case? Shouldn't you be minding your own business? Christine shot back. I guess you're drowning yourself in coffee and muffins because Danny's about to hit the road. Phyllis murmured, wrinkles in her nose. Christine joked that since she was getting plenty of cardio every night, there was no need to worry about overindulging in muffins. Phyllis persisted in pressuring Christine, implying that her significant case might not be as significant as she thought. Christine was accused by Phyllis of setting up schemes to destroy her chances of getting Danny. Once again, you're shooting off your mouth without knowing a damn thing. Christine shot back. Danny came over and planted a kiss on Christine's lips. Phyllis confided in Danny that she had been worried that she might not have time to bid him farewell before he left. Danny informed Phyllis that he had bid farewell to both Daniel and Lucy. Phyllis called Christine a stinky old flame, pointing out that she had a stewed romance in favor of work. Christine smiled back and said, I declined the case. After all, I'm going with Danny. Phyllis said that she had been discarded by Christine's clients. In an effort to defuse the argument, Danny told Phyllis that he wanted to start his tour on a high note and that he would like to remember Phyllis acting in accordance with the improvements she had made. Danny informed Phyllis that he had discussed with Christine their common passions, aspirations, and future goals. In a provocative tone, Christine said, but our night was about so much more than just talking. Phyllis said that Christine had prevented her from endorsing Danny's tour. Christine spoke up for herself and said that she and Danny had rekindled their romance. Danny, eager to put the experience behind him, cautioned Phyllis to be careful. In response, Phyllis said she would look after their son and do her best to prevent Daniel from committing the same grave error as his father. Break a leg, she commanded Phyllis before she turned to go. Danny apologized to Christine after Phyllis departed, making a joke about how break a leg was not suitable for a rock tour. Christine said, thrilled, that nothing could dampen her enthusiasm for their upcoming road trip. In response, Danny wrote, to our next chapter together, my love. Danny gave Christine a fervent kiss. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.